In the last lecture, we derived the relation between voltage across the capacitor and the current through the capacitor and we found the current through the capacitor is equal to C dV by dt and we can write I as it because we know current is the function of time and we can write voltage as vt because voltage is also the function of time so we have it equal to c dvt by dt and this form here is known as the seventh form the seventh form of ohms law and from here we can have the voltage vt we can write voltage vt is equal to 1 over capacitance c integration from minus infinity to t current i t dt and this form here is our eighth form eighth form of ohms law and we have already derived the first six forms of the ohms law and now we have the seventh and the eighth forms of ohms law now we will move on to the derivation of energy stored in a capacitor we know an ideal capacitor will not dissipate any power therefore the power dissipated by an ideal capacitor is equal to zero and hence we can say that the capacitor will store the energy and it will store the energy in the form of its electric field and there is a close relationship between energy and the work done energy is the capacity of doing work so if we can calculate the work done we will have the energy stored in the capacitor and work done is equal to integration from 0 to t power pt dt and we have derived power pt equal to voltage vt multiplied to current it so let us write vt it in place of pt so we have integration 0 to t voltage vt multiplied to current it dt and we can see from here that it is equal to c dvt by dt so in place of it we will write this so from here we are getting the work equal to integration 0 to t vt this vt then we have c d v t over d t and then d t now when you simplify this you are going to get integration 0 to t c v t d v t c is a constant so we will take it out of integration and we have c integration 0 to t v t d v t and integration of vt with respect to vt will be equal to vt square over 2 so we have c inside the bracket v square t over 2 the lower limit of integration is 0 and the upper limit is t so we are getting 1 over 2 c v square t and we can write v square t as v square because we know voltage is the function of time and therefore we will only write v in place of vt and then we have half c v square and this is the energy stored in a capacitor and here i will write down the final result energy stored in a capacitor let us represent it by ec is equal to half c v square and uh, we know we know q is equal to cv therefore we can write down 
energy EC equal to half CV multiplied to V. In place of CV, we will write Q. So we have half QV. Remember this form of the energy as well. And from this, we can say that voltage V is equal to Q over C. So in place of V, we will write Q over C. So again, we will have a new form which is EC equal to half Q square over C. Remember this form as well. But it will be good to remember this single formula and to derive these two forms using Q equal to CV. And if you compare this with the energy stored in an inductor, let's represent it by E sub L equal to half L I square then you will find in place of L you are having C and in place of I you are having V and if we compare them with the formula of kinetic energy that is half m v square you will find in place of m that is the mass we are having L and C and in place of velocity we have I and V now focus on one thing mass is constant mass of a body will not change it is constant and here l is constant and c is constant velocity will change it is variable similarly current here is variable and voltage here is variable so it is very easy to remember these two formulas if you know the formula of kinetic energy so this is all for this lecture. I will end it here. See you in the next one.